Hello again, it's, uh, it's Paul Beckwith, and uh, I'm going to uh, talk about the Arctic Report Card 2020. Okay, so every year, a sort of assessment over all of the Arctic comes out, and this has been going on for the last 15 years, and this is the uh, 2020 version. So um, if you just Google uh, Arctic Report Card 2020, and you can get to uh, you know the website for that. And if you scroll down to uh, report card full PDF and click on that, you can download the report. And I highly recommend that you have a look at it. So this show this shows some coastal erosion. This is the Mosaic expedition, the boat that was just put into the ice and left to float there to study it for a year. These are some fires in the um, in the boreal forest in the taiga. So I'm gonna talk about the, um, some of the highlights of, of this report. So, so let's just get right into it. So basically the Arctic is undergoing sustained transformation to a warmer, less frozen and biologically chained, changed place. Okay, annual air, land surface air temperature north of 60 degrees for October to September, October 2019, September 20th, was the second highest on record since at least 1900. Record warm temperatures in the Eurasian, Eurasian Arctic were associated with extreme conditions in the ocean and the land. Okay, sea ice loss in the spring was very early in the East Siberian Sea and Laptev Sea. This corresponded to record low snow cover over the land. The, uh, the end, it didn't set a new record for the entire melt season. It was the second lowest after 2012. But the mean sea surface temperatures in August were one to three degrees Celsius warmer than the 1982 to 2010 August mean over most of the Arctic Ocean. Exceptionally warm temperatures in the Laptev and Kara Seas that coincide with the early loss of sea ice in this region. July and August, the, re the ocean primary productivity in the Laptev Sea was twice as high for July and six times higher for August compared to their monthly averages. As a result, the bowhead whales, which uh, um, are, their population numbers have greatly increased because their food supply has greatly increased. Shifts in air temperature, storminess, sea ice and ocean have combined to increase the coastal permafrost erosion rates, okay, um, on the, so this is in the ocean and on the coastline. On the land, uh, there was record low June snow cover extent across the Eurasian Arctic, record low in the 54 years of accurate records. Extreme wildfires in 2020 in the Saka Republic of Northern Russia, that coincided with unparalleled warm air temperatures and record snow loss for the region. Temperatures reached over 100 degrees Fahrenheit or 38 Celsius in the Arctic. Since 2016, the tundra greenness trends have diverged strongly by continent, declining sharply in North America, but remaining above the long-term average in Eurasia. The Greenland ice sheet, ice sheet is experiencing huge melt, but it didn't break the record which was set last year. Glaciers and ice sheets outside of Greenland are trending to significant ice loss. Um, and there's more stuff on the models and the new observatory that was set up, etc. But let's look at the, there's an executive summary, but I just want to look at some of the, the figures um, in the key section. So, so 15 year perspective, um, you know, the massive changes, okay, uh, going on in the Arctic. But I, I want to look at the, look at the uh, get to the nitty gritty of this report to the figures. Okay, so uh, 15. Uh, so let's just have a let's scroll down to the to data. So there's different observing systems in the Arctic that are all listed here, and there's certain data products. For example, here we have the sea ice index and solid ice discharge. All of these different factors, and it rates how good the data collection is, whether it's ideal, only one ideal one here where we couldn't make it better. Uh, the blue ones here, so this is 
the, the, the data products. This is the vital signs in the Arctic report card and societal benefits. So it's rated good, right? There's still lots of room for improvement. We're getting more and more data on sea ice, tundra greenness, sea surface temperature. But so that's fully satisfied, meeting all requirements. But the, the good sections here, we still need to know more about these sections here. Okay, so this just gives you a, a, the sort of an idea as to scope of all the variables that are being measured in the Arctic. And then the performance ratings are given in a table. Okay, uh, but let's go down to the, uh, the figure. So surface air temperature. Okay, so October 2019 to September 2020, the second warmest 12 month period in the last century. Record remarkably warm Siberian surface air temperatures in the first half of 2020, three to five degrees Celsius above average during the boreal winter, January, February, March, and the boreal spring, April, May, June. A persistent, strong, and zonal jet stream over mid to high latitudes, latitudes led to warmer than average surface air temperature over northern Eurasia and colder than normal over Alaska and Greenland in the winter and spring. Okay, so let's just have a look. So this is the arc, this is the global temperatures here. This is from 1900 to 2020. The blue is the global temperature rise here, and the red is the Arctic. So the Arctic starts lower and comes higher. So if we, you know, eyeballing this plot, this is about minus 1.5 for the Arctic. This is almost two. That's a 3.5 Celsius rise in the Arctic, and the global. Um, say it's about minus 0.5 up to about 0.5, an increase of one degree C here and 3.5 for the Arctic. So <clears throat> three and a half degrees warming, uh, you know, our, our Arctic temperature amplification relative to the, the global temperature. Um, this is some of the distribution of the heat. So this is uh, relative to the 1981 to 2010 um, and this is the near surface, so about a kilometer up. Seasonal air temperature anomaly patterns in degrees Celsius. So the anomalies, the temperature anomalies. So look at the really hot areas here. This is in the in autumn of 2019, winter of 2020, extremely warm over here. Greenland's here. This is on the uh, Russian side. Spring of 2020, extremely warm here and the summer of 2020, extremely warm over, right over the, the ocean. Okay, and you can look at the wind patterns here. You can follow the arrows and see how the wind patterns change in the autumn, so quite zonal and then becoming wavier and quite wavy and also very wavy here. Um, this is the, uh, the information on the Arctic uh, oscillation. Which I won't go into here. Terrestrial snow cover, very important. So extremely high spring 2020 temperatures across Siberia resulted in the lowest June snow extent across the Eurasian Arctic in the 54 year satellite record. Okay, this happened in spite of a normal winter snowpack accumulation through April. So it just got super hot and the snow just got massacred. Okay, uh, and this, uh, so here is the, this is the snow cover extent anomaly in May. Okay, so, you know, we can see the trend down and we can see it over the Eurasian Arctic, you know, huge drop. And this is over the North American Arctic. This is in May and this is in June. Okay, huge drops in snow cover extent in those records. So uh, this is some, Numbers here. Okay, so well, the, the point that people forget is, you know, everybody focuses on the Arctic sea ice loss and when we'll have the blue ocean event. The September Arctic sea ice is dropping about minus 12.5% per decade. But the snow cover over in the Arctic for June is dropping at more like, um, at a much higher number, um, more like, you know, uh, what is it, uh, you know, 18% or something, right? It's much, much faster drop in June. Um, Mar you know, April, Urbay also dropping, but, but June is a period where, where it's dropping tremendously. 
Okay, this is snow cover duration. So not only is the extent dropping, but the duration, um, the snow cover duration in days, th this is, uh, these are the anomalies in days, relative, uh, okay, uh, the, the, from the 1998 to 2018 20 year mean, okay, and this is for the period August 2019 to January 2020, um, the snow onset period, so August 2019 to January 2020, you know, huge drop in days, up to 50 days shorter snow cover in that time period. And this is the snow melt period from February 2020 to July 2020, also huge drops um, around the Arctic. So snow cover is being massacred. This is the snow depth anomalies, um, March, April, May, and June. So, you know, it's much thinner uh, this is in um, this is in percentage of the 1999 to 2018 average. So huge drops, uh, you know, uh, huge drops in the thickness of the snow cover in all of these months. Okay, snow water equivalent um, actually showed an interesting trend. It was actually higher. So the snow that existed was much wetter. Okay, that's what that's showing. No, no big surprise there. Okay, so let's look at the Greenland ice sheet now. Okay, so the melt was large, but not as large as the previous year, and the albedo is, is dropping. So this is showing the albedo of Greenland, which is the average reflectivity of Greenland over the whole season. And you can see it varies between about 81% and 76%. Set a record in 2012 when the sea ice set a minimum record in September. You know, and there is a lot of bit of, a lot of fluctuation, but there's other factors coming into play. The jet stream is changing, et cetera, et cetera. You know, so we're seeing a lot of fluctuation. This is the spatial. Uh, this is how it looked in 2020. So the uh, albedo. Um, this is relative to um, the albedo anomaly map for summer, J June, July, August 2020, relative to a 2000 to 2009 reference period. Okay, and it shows you in the percentage change. So some the areas here are higher reflectivity. The blue areas are lower reflectivity. And this is the melt. Um, this is the surface melt area as a percentage of the ice sheet during 2020 is the solid red. This is the the uh, average from 1981 to 2010. And this is look at the record year. So in 2012, when we had the when we set the sea ice uh, minimum record in uh, September, we had huge, um, you know, through the summer, that summer, we had huge melt in Greenland. This year, um, you know, higher than, than normal, but not as much as, as 2012. And the surface mass balance, this is, this is the net ablation. Um, and you can see uh, that as you go to North Greenland, the ablation is much, much higher, you know, 1.7 meters, so it increased 66%. Uh, increased 33%. So it's much warmer in the higher Arctic. So the ablation is much higher on Greenland and it's lower in general as you go uh, south. And there were some regions where, you know, here it was negative ablation, so it was growth. Okay, so you can see the variation on Greenland itself. Um, and this is the total area change of uh, 47 major Greenland Tidewater Glaciers. And you can see these, uh, you know, this is in square kilometer and the total area loss. And you can see, you know, large area loss of these uh, tidewater glaciers. Okay, the total mass balance of Greenland in gigatons still dropping, dropped very quickly, accelerated to 2012, the maximum melt year. And then it followed, uh, you know, a similar trend to here from before. And then it's dropped quickly in 2018, 2019. Okay, so this is a huge uh, factor for sea level rise. Okay, uh, so I'll just continue on here. You know, the sea ice, uh, you know, let's have a quick look at the sea ice. We know, you know, the sea ice is rapidly going. This is in March, 2020 um, compared to the norm and then in September, 2020. And I've talked a lot about this, so I won't dwell on it, but this is the monthly sea ice trends in March, the drop, and in September. So we're dropping 
uh, you know, huge amounts. I'll continue. Thanks for listening.